where's Jeremy at? He's in here. Mr. Miner, where are you at, brother? So uh, one, I wanted to tell everyone, thank you for joining the Zoom. Uh, thank you for attending. Thank you for taking time out of your day to attend. That is now one on one. Looking for Jeremy. Where are you at, brother? And I would like to pass it off to Jeremy. I see he unmuted himself. He's yeah, there, I'm, 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 I'm here. I'm here, gentlemen. There you are. How are you, Jeremy? Hey, you know, just being the boring guy. What about you guys? <laughs> being the exciting guy, I guess. You there are you co host. Um, yeah, so you wanted um, myself. So if everyone could please mute besides myself and Jeremy. But you wanted uh, me to kind of interview you, I guess. There were some questions. Yeah, you're you. welcome to do that. Now, I've only got, I see you scheduled this for an hour. I've only got about 40 minutes. I do have a hard yep. stop in about yep. 40 minutes. So what I did is um, I brought on one of our clients as well that uh, makes over 100000 a month in commission selling solar. Um, okay. We we subcontract, we train 158 different industries. Solar is probably one of the top 10 to 12 that we train as well. So we, you know, kind of like know it like the back of our hand as well. And we got lots of clients that are making six, seven figures a year. A lot of them don't even have teams. I know with you guys in power, you guys build teams. So this guy could probably make more if he was with you guys. So he's just a, a one man show. So we wanted to bring him on because we, we train like in our virtual training platforms and our group training with our trainers. We bring in former clients that then teach how to apply NBQ to that industry. So that's right. Joseph's here. So when we when you ask some of the questions, um, I'll kind of go through a few things here, and then I might even ask Joseph like to elaborate because he's the one like in the trenches as well, just like yeah. everybody on here. Okay. Sure. What no, what no, do we no. got? Okay. Uh, so one. Okay. How do we get a prospect to let their guard down? How do you get a prospect to let their guard now? Now, remind me, you guys are primarily just virtual, right? Like on Zoom? Primarily, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to, I'll, I'll go over like a quick concept. And then, you know, I can show you like, we might even share a script with you guys from your space, right? And kind of show an example of what I mean. So the, the most important thing that, that everybody has to learn, uh, especially with solar or anything, is how do you get the prospect to let their guard down? Because if you cannot get them to let their guard down, do you notice like when you ask, you thought good questions that they give you kind of generalized, vague, surface level answers? Anybody notice that? Okay. Now, why is that? Does anybody know why that occurs? Did the, did the prospect before they got on that appointment with you on Zoom, do they wake up that morning and like write out like, you know what, when that salesperson asked me that fourth question, because his tone kind of sounds a little bit needy, I think I'm going to go into fight or flight mode and I'm just going to emotionally shut down and stay surface level and just give them three or four word answers. Did they plan that out before they got on with you or is something you said or the way you're asking the questions triggering that? in their mind anybody tell me in the chats which one that could be okay most salespeople blame the prospect but the problem is is what we're doing when we're talking to them is triggering that reaction in their brain so we want to do what probably eliminate that so that doesn't happen in their mind right so that's what we call, because you guys have all heard of the ABCs of closing. Type in, I'm going to pull the chats up here. Just going to, I mean, I just want to communicate with you guys here. So type in me if you've ever heard of the ABCs of closing. I know you guys are all taught that mantra, right? Now, I'm going to show you something different. This is called the ABDs of selling. Now that stands for always be disarming. Okay, because if you can't disarm the prospect, it's going to be pretty hard to sell them, right? Or if you do sell them, but they stayed surface level and just logical based answers the whole time, how many of those people actually end up getting installed? Very few, because now you're gone. And that external sales pressure you were taught to put on them, guess where that goes when you leave? It wears off. And now you're not there. And that's why they cancel, even though they have problems that you can solve, right? So we want to learn how to always be disarmed. Now, one way we do that is we want to get them immediately into what's called results-based thinking 
okay, over price or cost-based thinking. Does that make sense? Okay. Even though they don't really pay anything for solar, right? They're not like giving you a check there or anything, right? We got to get them into that result, like the end result. What is the result of solar? See, you're not selling solar, right? You're selling what? The results of what solar does for them. You're selling them possibly a lowered bill. You're selling them a locked in rate. You're selling them eventually not having a bill. That's what you're selling. The results of what solar does, not solar itself. Most salespeople, especially in this space, we've noticed are like selling solar. We would train you how to sell the results of what solar does for them. Okay. Now, let me give you an example. Um, here's, you know, this might make sense. You want me to, I can share my screen and just kind of show you. Yeah, you should be like a those. solar specific sales structure. You want me to do that? Anybody want me to do that possibly? Okay. All right. So let me show you this. And I'm just going to show you this. And then, you know, we'll. We'll uh, talk to Joseph here. Okay, you see that right there? Okay, so this is what's called NEPQ. Uh, any of you like follow me? Any of you of our any of you are clients compared to following me? Like following me, you're just going to get tips, right? And tips are not going to make you rich, of course. But if you're one of our clients, this is what we teach you, like specific training for your industry. Okay. So the first part here, this is called NEPQ. It stands for Neuro Emotional Persuasion Question. And these are called connection questions. So connection questions, like I put here, take the focus off you, immediately put it on them. Because I have to get them in results-based thinking from the very first words out of my mouth compared to price or cost-based thinking. So let's say you get them on Zoom, because that's what you guys do, right? And you usually like, hey, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, can you see me? Yes, I can see you. Talk like that. Now, what what do most salespeople do in your industry right after that? Somebody tell me, what's usually the first question you guys ask? And don't look at these questions because I know you don't ask them. Uh, you got to be honest. What's the first thing out of your mouth? Somebody tell me and be real. Put it in the chat. How's your day going? How are you doing today, John? Now, why do you do that? Somebody tell me, why do you why do you ask that question? Does your prospect genuinely believe that you really care about how their day's going? Be honest with yourself. When a salesperson asks you, hey, how's your day going? Do you genuinely believe that that salesperson genuinely wants to hear how your day's going the next five minutes? No, right? You know what they're doing, right? It's, you know it's an icebreaker. Well, the problem is, is so do most of your prospects. Do you know why? because they're used to every single salesperson who's ever tried to sell them anything, ask what type of question in the beginning. How's your day going? How are you doing today? So what you're doing, and you probably don't realize this, is you're triggering what's called fight or flight mode right from the beginning. Because if you sound like every other salesperson who's ever tried to sell them anything, what happens in the prospect's brain? They emotionally start to shut down. So when you start asking questions, that's one of the reasons why they give you surface level answers, generalized answers, because they know what you're trying to do. I've even had salespeople like, no, Jeremy, I really, really want to know how their day's going, which I'd be highly suspicious you are with every single prospect you talk to. Your prospect doesn't believe you are. Now you'll still get the laydowns, but I'm talking about most people you're talking to, not just the easy ones. Okay, so you want to stay away from that. So, you know, can you hear me? Now you guys do inbound leads here, the book on the calendar, right? A little bit of everything. Okay, so well, let's say it's an inbound lead. If it's an outbound lead, we would tweak this somewhat. These are more inbound sales structures here. We have outbound too. So I'm going to look down at my notes and then I'm going to, okay, can you hear me? I can see, okay, so let's see, John, it looks like uh, you had booked on the counter about looking at like possible ways to like lock in your rate and lower your bill, right? Now, what did I just do? What did I just do? When I say lock in your rate and lower your bill, what way of thinking am I getting them into automatically? What's the result of going solar? Lower their bill, lock in the rate. Do you see how I just 
literally did that, how I seeded that in their mind from the very first question I asked. Would you ever have any prospect? Like, nope, nope, that's not why I'm here. No, they're like, yeah, right. See, I'm automatically shifting their mind into results-based thinking over price or cost-based thinking. See how I did that? It's really simple to do, okay? Remember, you're not selling solar or solar panels. You're selling the results of what it does, okay? Then I'm like, now, hey, I was curious. Like when you when you went through the the ad where you where you saw you know John talking about like the you know the the, the locked in rates, you know the rate hikes with Nevada Energy. But besides that, like what what was it that that caused you to to want to look into this further? Now, that was all scripted. I knew exactly what I was going to ask. But what did I do with my body language there? Anybody notice? Anybody tell me? See, I looked up and I started pacing slower. That implies to the prospect that I'm thinking about what I'm asking. I'm not just asking a scripted question. Because if the prospect feels like you're just going down your script, what do you feel like they're going to do? Start to emotionally shut down. See, and what type of tone did I just use there? That's a curious tone. Why would I use a curious tone there? Well, due to lack of time, I'm just going to tell you. Your tone is how your prospect interprets the intention behind your question. That's how they interpret why you're asking the question. So if you don't understand how to use your tone, because there's a curious tone, there's a confused tone. Uh, walk me back. I'm not uh, understanding. What type of rate hikes have they been forcing you to pay? See, I started there with a confused tone and end with a concerned tone. Okay. Your tone is where the sales made. I hate to tell you. You guys ever read books where it says your verbal, nonverbal skills, 73% of the sales made there? Anybody ever read that in a sales book? Does anybody know how to do that after you read that sales book? You don't do. You don't know how to use your tone. They don't teach you that. You can't teach that in a book. How do you learn how to use advanced tonality in a book? You can't, right? Very rare. But that's where the sales made because that's how your prospect is interpreting why you're asking. So if they feel like you're asking a scripted question to manipulate them into the answer you want them to say, what obviously are they going to do? Stay surface level. That's how we protect ourselves from people who we feel are a threat. And how are salespeople viewed in society as large? In large. As a threat in society because of the way we've been forced to learn how to sell to them okay that's a whole nother training so that's an example of how to get them to start letting their guard down okay now i'm going to show you one more thing and we're going to go to the next question otherwise we're going to be here all day all right so then i'm going to go into what's called a status frame because they've got to know that there could be next steps at the end of this call okay now a lot of people you know, they have like a, a set the agenda frame, like, okay, you know, here's how this call is going to go. I'm going to ask you some questions and based off your answers, we'll know if you're a good fit for us and you'll know if we're a good fit for you. Sound fair? Well, that sounds kind of, oh yeah, that sounds good. But what do you think is going on in the prospect's mind when you do that? You're telling them how the call is going to go. So if they're an A-type personality, they're going to do what? push back because they don't like to be told. You ever notice that? When you ever tried to set the agenda frame? Okay, a lot of sales people have been taught that. And what they're going to do is when you ask questions, they feel like your questions are going to force them to answer the way you want. And that's why they give you vague surface level answers. But if I do it this way, and I want you to pay attention to my tone and body language, everything I'm doing here. Ah, so they're answering the last question. I'm like, ah, okay. And I would say that, see, that's a verbal cue that helps me transition and bridge from question to question. Some of you look like you're you're about to be run over by a truck, you're like deer in the headlights. Is this over your head? What's going on over there? You guys okay? Okay, if you guys don't, if you're like, I don't understand what you're talking about, Jeremy, like Jeremy, I'm completely lost, all right? You guys, look, some of you look like deer about to be ran over. Okay, this is just basic stuff I'm showing you right here. Uh, okay, and I would say the, you know, the first part of the call, it's pretty, you know, basic. It, it's really more for us to, to find out like more about, you know, who you're using now, like your usage, you know, what type of rate hikes they've been making you pay compared to what you're trying to get the bill down to, to see what the gap looks like. And then, you know, towards the end of the call, if you feel that, hey, this, this might be what you're looking for, um, you know, we can, we can talk about uh, possible next steps. Would that help you? 
No one will ever say, no, it will not help me to talk about possible next steps. You'll never have that. You'll never trigger sales resistance. Remember, what is your first job that you have to do if you want to sell? Get the prospect to what? Let their guard down. Okay, if you can't do that and their guard's up, way harder to sell. You see, you're making it hard for yourself when it could be really easy with your prospects. I just prefer easy. You make a lot more money when it's easy. Okay, and selling's not stressful. People don't cancel. Your life is just much more better. Okay. All right. So that's called a status frame. All right. Joseph, like when you learned this, because you, you know, before you came in NEPQ, you know, Roberry was like one of the top reps for so was it Solar City back in the day with Elon Musk? He's a veteran over here, Roberry. We have Roberry. Yeah. So Robert yep. was making like 20 grand a month already. Uh, but Joseph, what, like getting the prospect to let their guard down, like what did that, when you started learning how that, how, the, how to do that, like what changed with the prospects? Like how did they react to you compared to the way they did before? And he did door to door, just so you guys know. Mm -hmm. right. That was night and day. Like my intention, I hate pushy salesmen and I, I never wanted to be that way. That was never my motive. But the way that I was behaving, the questions I was asking, if, I, if any, all triggered sales resistance because I sounded just like everybody else. But this right here, one, when you're asking questions, you're 100% focused on them. And when I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm focused on me and who do they care about more, right? And so that, and then the neutral languaging and the pause and the shift. So at the very, very beginning, because if they just looked at solar, they'd actually do it. At the very beginning, you can see the feel there. The feel is completely different. They feel like they can be real because you're being real. It's like a no pressure free zone. Yeah, see, the, the reason why, so I want, does everybody understand, I mean, okay, do we have any brain scientists on here? Okay, well, I'm a, I'm a brain scientist, so I know I'm a weird, so my background in college is behavioral science and social dynamics. Now, social dynamics is the study of why human beings do what we do. Why do human beings, like if you're married, why does your wife expect you to take out the trash and if you don't take out the trash, that means you don't love her. But let's say you get divorced and your next wife, she doesn't care anything about taking out the trash. She could care less. Why is that? What's going on in the brain? What are the differences? Well, it's social dynamics. The way she was raised, the first wife, was her dad took out the trash. So she saw that every single day of her life. And that was the way that her mom felt loved. But the second person, I'm just giving you a random example, the second person Dad never took the trash out at all. He's a business executive, was always gone. And the way that he showed love was buying his mom a ton of gifts. So that's why she feels love because she saw that and it patterned her brain to think that. See, that type of stuff was what you guys go up against every single prospect you talk to. And they all have different social dynamics based on their childhood and what they say to you and how they react to you. And if you don't understand how their brain works, by using your tone to get them to let their guard down and questions and how to read what they're doing, okay? Because one thing we would teach you in our, our virtual training courses for clients is listening to what the prospect means, not just what they say. Let me repeat that. Listening to what the prospect means, not just what they say. And I can only do that if I learn how to hear their tone and interpret that in my brain very, very quickly. Okay, which if you've never been taught how to do that, you're just like winging it because you just don't know. You're like hoping and praying that something you say is going to magically cause them to want to move forward. But when you understand how their brain works, it's easy to move almost everybody forward. But if you don't, you're just kind of hoping and praying. Let's go to the next question. I could go on to that about 12 hours. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm going to skip a couple of questions because yeah, we, we have about 20 minutes on the clock. Um, uh, we'll go, we'll go another 27 minutes. All right. Let's 27. do that. Okay. Nice. Perfect. perfect. <laughs> uh, how, how do we get the prospect to fully understand their current situation? Okay. Let me, let me give you this psychological thing. And then, then I'll, then me and Broberry will show you. Okay. So in any sales situation, okay. You have what's called the prospects current state. Okay. And you have what's called their objective state. Okay, and then you, the salesperson, have to build a gap in their mind from where they are now, current state, or we would call it current situation, compared to where they want to be. We call that their objective state, or what does their future look like 
once they have a lower bill and a locked in rate and on a path to eventually not having a bill with what you sell. Now, let me ask you this question. And I want you to tell me yes or no. Just be honest. It's not a trick question, okay? And I want everybody on here to answer this. When you get on Zoom, even though, let's just say it's an inbound lead. I'm not even talking about outbound. That's a whole different situation. It's an inbound lead and they book on the calendar. Do your prospects know what their real situation is when you first start talking to them? Just yes or no in the chats and just be honest. Okay, I'm seeing mostly no's. You're exactly right. Even though they booked on the calendar, most of your prospects do not understand what their real situation is. How many of your prospects sit around Sunday afternoon on a spreadsheet and map out the cost and the rate hikes they've been paying for the past 23 years and you know all these other charges on their bill and then do a split cost analysis if they go solar, how much is going to be year one, year six, year 12, year 27. Any, anybody have prospects that come to the call with spreadsheets? That's probably pretty rare, okay? And even if they come with a spreadsheet, they probably know that they have a problem, but they don't understand what? The depth of the problem. They don't understand how bad the problem really is, right? Because they don't know, they're not a solar expert more than likely, right? And they especially don't know what the consequences are if they don't do anything about solving the problem. Now, if we now whose job is it to help the prospect see what their real situation is, them or ours? It's ours. However, most salespeople have been trained to tell the prospect what their real situation is. And that does what? Goes in one ear, out the other. Do you know why? Because you're biased. You're the salesperson. Of course, you're going to tell them that they should go with you and that they've got all these problems. And that's why they don't even pay attention when you say it. You can literally say, you're going to save. $3,000 a year and your rate's never going to go up. And they'd be like, that's not a big deal. I don't care. Because they feel like you're trying to sell them. It, people don't make de buying decisions on logic. They make them on emotion, 100%. Did you know that if, your brain, if you have brain damage on your emotional side of your brain, like let's say you're in the Marines and a grenade goes off and your right side of your brain, your emotional side of your brain is damaged. Did you know you can't even decide if you want to go pee or not. You're a vegetable because every decision you make starts on your emotional side of your brain. Anybody know that? Nobody told you that yet? Okay, I know. I'm a brain scientist. I'm a weird dude. Okay, all right. So we have to, so here's back to the point. If we can't get the prospect to understand what the real situation is, how in the hell can you build a gap to where they want to be if they don't really know where they're at. That's really damn hard, okay? So it all starts with helping the prospect first understand what the real situation is. We do that by asking the right questions at the right time. Now, just because you have the right questions and ask them at the right time, doesn't mean the prospect is just gonna be gladly willing to tell you all their problems, am I right? So how can I get the prospect to open up and go below the surface when I ask the question. Do you know the only way is this? Let me show you. You're gonna be surprised. It's your tone. Back to your tone. There's four types of tone, okay? There's a curious tone. There is a confused tone. There is a challenging tone. Challenging skeptical tone. We'll just stay with the C's because that looks really cool. And then there's a concern tone. Okay. A tone that shows empathy. Now, we have to understand which questions would require a different tone. Does that make sense? Because if you ask a curious tone when it should be like a challenging tone, the prospect interprets that and they're going to answer completely different. They're going to answer based off your tone. And I'm going to give you an example of this. This is just behavioral science 101. Let's say you hear a woman later today yell in the parking lot at a grocery store. Just yell. What's your first reaction? You're going to go like this, right? 
Do you know why? Because that's the survival part of your brain. That's your fight or flight part of your brain. That's been there for 10 billion years. Like the saber tooth tigers coming around. That's how God wired us. Like, am I safe? So you don't even hear what that lady said. You don't even understand her words for a couple of seconds. You react. Your brain reacts. Am I safe? Now, what that does, it goes, that's called your reptilian part of your brain. Anybody ever heard of this? Read about this? Some people call it different things, but just reptilian part of the brain. Now, within like a split second, that then goes into the second part of your brain, which is called your midbrain. And your midbrain starts to interpret what that lady said. Okay? That starts to hear the words. And then within like a split second from there, it goes into what's called the third part of your brain called your neocortex. I know this is boring. It'll just help you sell way more than you are. Then it goes into their neocortex. And that part of the brain says, oh, it's just a lady yelling at her kid to get more strawberries. I'm okay. That's why when you guys get telemarketing calls from salespeople, and after like seven seconds, you say what? Oh, I'm not interested? You don't even really remember what they said, did you? Do you know why? Because of their tone. They sounded like a what? Salesperson. Scripted. That causes you to survival mode. See what I mean? See, survival mode with human beings now, because we're constantly marketed to and sold all the time, we're not talking about saber-toothed tigers, right? But we're talking about salespeople. Am I safe from the salesperson? That's why you hang up on telemarketers quickly. That's why if you ever did door-to-door -door and you knock on the door, Oh, not in solar, not interested. They didn't hear what you said. Oh, I'm not interested because your tone. Okay. So even though they book on the calendar with you and your tone's off because you, you don't understand how to trigger engagement, because in the beginning, I'm going to ask more of a curious tone, right? And that's why they feel like, oh, he's asking because he's curious or he wants to know for a reason. There must be a reason why he wants to know this stuff. Okay. It's a curious tone. But let's say if they, ask me some or they start talking or they start answering from a question I'm like I, I, i'm not i'm not understanding how did you mean when you said now that was a what a confused tone and now because they feel like i'm confused they're gonna what clarify what they meant is anybody getting this okay this is really important stuff this takes you from where you're at now, like Robert is making 20 grand a month to 100 grand a month, like these type of things we're talking about, because he understands how their brain works. So when you understand how to work with human behavior, you just eliminate all the sales resistance that you that you lose sales from now. OK, uh, all right. Uh, I digress. Robert, say something real quick and I'll sh I'll share a script. I'll even show them an example of what I mean by this. Of course. If they listen to every single sales recording ever done, they would realize how everybody talks fast and it would make them not talk fast sooner than anything. And you never want to move or talk faster than if you could like in water. And you know how when we say something and something else is heard? Tone. Yeah. Yeah, your tone is a massive deal. Now, I'm going to show you an example here. Okay. And this might be completely, I know it's going to be count, counterintuitive to what a lot of you have been taught. So now I'm after my connection question, because there's other connection questions you're going to ask. I'm just giving an example. Can everybody see that? Okay. Actually, I'll do this. I'll enlarge it even more. Okay. So here's where I'm, I'm helping now. <laughs> Let me go back here. Okay. Remember we have the current state and the objective state, right? Okay. So here I'm asking what their situation is because most don't know. Okay. So let's say I'm going to focus right here. Now you're um, now pay attention to my tone and my body language. Everything I'm about to do, I'm doing for a very specific psychological reason. Now your um, your electric bills. Could you tell me a little bit about those? I, I know a lot of the year like they're pretty low, but wh what have they been making you pay lately? Now what did I just do there? Notice what I did here. Why would I say? I know most of the year they're pretty low. Why would I downplay their bill? God, that doesn't make any sense. Why would I do that? Somebody tell me. Somebody tell me in the chats. Why would I downplay their bill? Why wouldn't I just say, I know that those rate hikes are horrible. Yeah, uh, you know, a, a system, a neighbor of yours, they're paying this way. Why would I downplay first? Well, I got to disarm them. That's one reason. Now, the second reason is it's called mismatching. 
So in the brain, you as a human being typically will mismatch what salespeople say to you if you feel like you're being sold. Am I right? Because if I said, now, hey, tell me about your bills. I know that the rates have been outrageous lately. What have they been making you pay? Now, the laydown sales that already were interested, they'll be like, oh, the rates were horrible, blah, 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 blah. Now you can, I don't need to show you how to sell to the laydowns. Every blind scroll eventually finds a nut, right? You ever heard of that from Brian Tracy? Okay, so you're already gonna get those. What I'm showing you is like how to sell to the other 80% that are on the fence, that based on your sales ability, determines which side of the fence they go to. Status quo, where nothing changes, the problem's the same, or they get their problem solved and get the result that they maybe didn't know they even needed, okay? That's what I'm showing you how to do here. That's where you make a lot more money because anybody could sell it to the laydowns, right? Okay, so your electric bills, could you, could you tell me a little bit more about those? I know most of the year they're pretty low, but what have they been making you pay lately? Now, what type of tone did I just have there? Anybody let me know what type of tone? More of a curious kind of at the very end concern tone. Okay. Now, if if they're like, because a lot of product sex and yes, they're like, well, I'm not, I'm not really sure. Well, if you really thought about it, what have they been forcing you to pay the last six to 12 months? Now, why would I say forcing you to pay or making you pay? Why would I say that to a homeowner? Because human beings don't like to be made or forced to do anything. Am I right? Especially Americans. We're America, home of the free. We don't like to be forced. So do you see how by me changing that, rather than saying, how much are, how much are you paying? That doesn't do anything. But how much, how much have they been making you pay lately? See, concern tone? How much have they been forcing you to pay the last six months? Like I'm concerned, okay? See how I'm wedging myself in between who? The power company? and the prospect. See how I'm helping the prospect feel that the power company is what? Evil, bad, taking advantage of them without me saying those words. Because if I got on there like, oh, they're horrible, like they're so bad, they're taking advantage of people. You know what a lot of people would say? Well, I mean, they're not that bad. They're going to mismatch you. So what I showed you is just to see that where they start telling themselves that. Is internal persuasion where they persuade themselves more persuasive than you pushing and pressuring them, trying to persuade them? Yeah, that's why you have so many cancels after you sell. Because when you leave, oh, that just goes away. And now they start to have second doubts, okay? But when it's their idea, why they want it, and they give you seven reasons why they feel like they have to change, it's really hard for them to cancel when they told themselves why they have to have it. It's like really hard for them to go back on what they told themselves they have to have. But who, if you tell them why they have to have it, well, if you're just a salesperson, they don't care. Okay, that's an example. Anybody have any questions on that? Okay. All right, what else? What else we got here? We got, uh, let's go like 10, 12 more minutes here. I okay, could train uh, on this like 25 hours today, but they have me, you know, I have to do work. Right, right, right. Uh, how to build urgency to buy now and not push it down the road. You want to know that? Okay, there's a lot that you have to be, I mean, okay. So let's go back. Let me ask you this question. And I want you to type in the chat. What's the biggest emotional driver in a human being that causes them to want to change? What's the biggest emotional driver in a human being that causes them to want to change? It's actually pain more than fear. Fear is a close second, but it's pain. You guys ever read books where like no pain, no sale? It sounds like a cool tagline, but then they don't teach you how to help them see the pain. Okay. The only way they will feel the pain is by you helping them create a gap from where they are to where they want to be. That doesn't happen when you ask an option close at the end. That's not when the prospect decides Yes or no? If they say yes, now when do you when do you want it installed? Friday here or Saturday here? That's and oh, I want to do it Friday. That's not when they decided that they wanted to go solar. They'd already decided based on the conversation before. 
Otherwise, everybody would. That's not how they decide when you use an option close. Every, does that make sense? Because then you'll have some people that you'll do that with, and they're like, "Oh, I didn't say I'm I, I'm ready yet. I need to do more research." Now you trigger sales resistance. Okay, so you have to build the gap by helping them relive the pain. That's part of. That's the whole discovery conversation you're having with them that builds the gap. Does that make sense? Questions build the gap but not just any questions. And then how you use your tone, because if you don't know how to use your tone, they're not going to open up to the questions you're asking. They're going to stay surface level because they don't trust you. Does that make sense? Okay. I'll give you an example of this real quick. All right. Let's, uh, uh, Roberry, let's show them like a, maybe a consequence question. I mean, there's a lot more to this. I just want to make sure everybody understands. Like if you're just like, oh, I'm going to take three questions here and I'm going to make a hundred grand a month, you're, you're going to fall flat on your face because there's stuff that leads up to each thing that you have to do. And depending on how they answer, you have to know then know what question to ask instead, because I might have to replace a question on the script based on what they're saying, right? Okay. If they're older, real quick, coach, like the consequence question is like, have you thought about what would happen if you didn't do anything about this and your situation got worse? You yeah. would say it not like that. And then the one that's in here is, is also for consequence. And then what you said earlier, um, if we want them to see floor differently, and one of the best ways to do that is what you said earlier, us versus them frame. And that urgency, like they've been wrong. Like how, how long is this going to be okay? Like how much willing are they willing to tolerate that? Anyways. Are you going to uh, let them keep forcing you to pay the rate hikes? So you guys have all been taught you got to get them to say yes seven times. And if you get them to say yes seven times, you have a 71% more chance to make the deal. Has anybody ever been taught that? Well, what proof do they give you that that's the case? Any proof? No scientific studies that shows that? Oh, because there are none, just so you know. You know where that comes from? It comes from a sales trainer back in the 1950s that first wrote that based on their firm study. <laughs> okay. Their firm did the study with like a thousand prospects. And then every sales trainer since has really copied and pasted that into their books. Just so you know, there's actually no scientific proof that that's the case. See, I want them to say no certain times because the more no's I get, the more likely it moves them into yes. I know that doesn't make any sense, does it? But if I look at him and be like, are, are you going to let them keep forcing you to pay that much? No, I'm not going to let them. See, I want to know, not yes, right? Are you opposed to looking at it a different way? Hard for them to say, yes, I'm opposed. No, I'm not opposed. See, this is just a few examples. So let's say that you're a uh, robot, what, like a PPA loan, you're selling that or something? A PPA, like the ones like, have you yeah. considered that you're stuck in a never any contract, nothing in writing, they can just raise it as much as they want, whenever they want. Like, yeah, that concert yeah. question, you got, how are you going to save There's money a lot. month unless you go solar? Do you have yeah. an answer to avoid this if you can't control the bill? Like, yeah, there's a there's a lot. So let's say that you're talking to a 30 or 40 year old or 50 year old. I don't know. Right. OK, so I mean, what now? Notice I'm, I'm going to show you how to do this with your tone. OK, because if you're like, what happens if you don't do anything about this? They keep raising your rates every year like they have. Now you're 70, 75 and you're selling to pay the bill every month. But the bills are more than three times it is now and you're on living income. How would you pay for it at that point? Oh, I don't know. I'd have to figure something out. Uh, okay, uh, see, like, see, it's all in your tone. Now, I'm going to start with the skeptical tone because at the end of what's called solution awareness questions, which we don't have time to train you all that, we, we have them on an emotional high because now they see what the future looks like once these newfound problems they didn't really understand they had are actually solved and their rates locked in, their bills lowered, and then after 25 years, they're not going to have a bill. Now they start to realize it and they feel it so they're on this emotional high now what i want to do and you guys are like why would you do that is i want to rip that away from them do you know why because i want them to defend themselves on why they feel they have to change now not push it down the road so you guys have all probably been taught by sales trainers that you need to do all the selling you got to persuade them you gotta you gotta you know posture them uh push them pressure to do what's best for them you can do that if you want. It's a lot of stress, a lot of hard work for not a lot of deals. See, what we train you is like, because are you the one that has the problem or the prospect? Who has the problem here? Oh, they do. Oh, uh, what? Yeah, they have the problems. 
Not you, who has a solution to solve their problems. You do. You guys have to start acting like that, okay? Rather than all selling them, you're going to learn how to get them to do all the work. You're going to learn how to get them to sell themselves. You're going to learn how to get them to overcome their objections. You're going to learn how to get them to pull you in. You make way more money when you learn how to do that. And it's easy and you never have any stress because you don't have to worry about people canceling. Okay. We've taken solar companies from like a 50% cancellation rate down to like 10 or 11%, even when it's scheduled out a couple months. That's a big difference in money, right? Okay. So what, what happens if you don't do anything about this and they, they, you know, they keep raising your rates like they have, but now you're, I mean, now you're 70, 75 years old, still having to pay the bill every month. But now it's three times as high. And now, like you said, now you're on a limited income. How would you, how would you pay for it? I mean, at that point, what did I just do there? See, that's a long consequence question. But did you see how I paced it out? That's called verbal pacing. When you have something long that you're going to say, you have to pace it out with what's called verbal pausing. See, I kind of paused here and there. Why would I pause here and there when I'm going through something long that I'm asking or saying? Can anybody tell me why I would pause for one or two seconds? What does that do to the prospect's brain? Uh, yeah. I don't like the word boxed in, but I know what you mean. What it does is it causes them to think deeper about the question I'm about to ask. And it causes them to lean in because they're they're waiting on every single word I'm saying. That causes them to stay engaged. They never tune out. Listen to what I do. Okay, but what happens if you don't do anything about this and they keep raising your rates every year? See how I'm using my hands? Now, what does that do? They keep raising your, what is that visually doing in their mind? What is What does it cause them to think about in their mind? Their rates keep raising. See how I'm visually putting that in their brain. You guys didn't even notice that, did you? And they keep raising the rates like they have, but now you're, I mean, now you're 70 or 75 at that point, still having to pay the bill every month, but the bill's three times what it is now. And now, like you said, you're on, you're on social security. How, how would you guys pay for it at, at that point? And see, how I lowered my tone into a what? concern tone. Now, why would I lower my tone into a concern tone at the end? What does that do in the prospect's brain? Anybody tell me? I'm just teaching your basic stuff right here. Why would I lower my tone into concern tone? Why, not, why wouldn't I just have a regular voice? Why? Anybody know? Remember, your tone is what? How the prospect interprets the intention behind the question. So if they interpret that I'm asking them this question because I'm concerned for them, I'm probably going to get them to emotionally open up a lot better than if they feel I'm asking the question to try to logically trap them into answering it the way I want them to. Does that make sense? Some of you look look like I'm about to run over you. Are you like a deer? What's going on over there? Okay, I digress. All right. Uh, all right, one, one more question and, and we'll jump off. Hope I gave you a, a little, little few nibbles a little today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I like this one we came up with. How to tie down the prospects so that they don't cancel down the road. Obviously, Oh man, that's a good one. Robert, we just, put that, process. we just put that in the uh, <laughs> virtual. Well, okay, first of all, one thing you do to tie down is build a massive gap where they tell you four or five reasons why they need to change. That's one reason, but there is some tie down questions that we teach for your industry and our virtual training portals for our clients. Robert, I know we just recorded that new one and I'm trying to remember what it was. It's so good. Should we tell them about Bill? Spot. Should we oh. tell them about Bill? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm trying to remember. I, I need to go back into that portal. Um, yeah, back in the, it's like we're leading the day by sign docs and it's like, okay, one more thing. Please, don't please like, you're not, please tell me you're not one of these people, like, because oh, you never yeah, feel over here. Yeah. yeah. You never feel here. Hey, oh, okay. I, I, yeah, so yeah. It's like riding a bike. Okay. So before you get off Zoom, let's just say, now, hey, now you, okay, you have, like I said, you have to learn how to use your tone. 
It's all in your tone. If you don't know how to use your tone, it's going to sound awkward. Yeah. Now, anybody on here born out of your mother's womb with advanced tonality skills? No? Anybody on here born uh, out of your mother's womb with advanced questioning skills? Oh, no. Anybody born with advanced objection prevention or objection handling skills? Were you born with those skills? Gene says he was. You're the first salesperson I ever have met that was born out of your mother's womb with advanced questioning and tonality skills. That is amazing. We need to, we need to like study his brain. What happened there? See, my point is no one is a born salesperson. That is the biggest BS anybody would ever tell you. Nobody is born with those skills. Nobody. Oh, I'm born with the gift of the gap. Well, that's why you don't make any sales. Because people don't buy when you talk. That's why you're broke. How's the gift of the gab working out for you? Okay. See, that's a myth. Those are acquired skills. See, what's your biggest expense in life? Your lack of knowledge. That's your biggest expense in life, right? Not having the right sales ability, the high level sales ability, and those skills to be able to make two to three to five times what you are. That's what you pay life every year because you haven't acquired those skills yet, right? Am I right? Roberry, you used to make 20, now you make 100. So for all those years, you weren't making 100, you were actually losing 80 grand a month every single month, month after month after month after month for one year, two years, three years. So 80 grand a month times one year, you know, you only lost like 960,000 every year for three years straight, right? Way more that, time. Would be, that would be what? A pretty big expense in life, right? See, now once you have the right skills, now you make that money. You don't, you know, you have the, you can't make them. How do you have a higher level of income without acquiring a higher level of sales ability? Are you guys just going to triple your work hours to triple your income? You're going to work 24 hours a day? I, I don't know how you're going to get there, okay? I, all right. So I digress. So going back. So I'm trying to remember the tie down. I'm like, oh my gosh, we just, we just literally put this in the portal, like literally like a month ago. Now, hey, now it's a playful tone. Now, hey, before I leave, you're, you're not going to be one of those guys. You, you know what I mean? So it's that, it's that playful tone there. And then Robert, where do we go from that? I'm trying to remember. I'd have to go back and watch the portal. So good. What was one it? Those, like, like one of those, oh, I know, where, I know. Came I'm excited about it. Cool. Now, you're not going to be you're not going to be one of those guys that call me in a couple of weeks and they're like, Jeremy, you know, I called Nevada Power and they convinced me that I needed to keep paying the rate hikes, uh, you know, for the next 25 years. You're not going to be one of those people that call me saying your power company convinced you to keep paying the rate hikes every month, are you? Oh, no, I would never do that. Those SOBs, I'm going to give them the middle finger, right? See. I control that by my sarcastic, playful tone, okay? And then I was like, yeah, because, phew, you know, we had this, <laughs> this is a crazy story, but about nine months ago, you know, one of your, well, they're about six blocks over, that Bill Ayers guy, you know, the guy with the red door over there in the cul-de-sac, you know, was always walking his little chihuahua, you know, Bill over there. So Bill was like all gung-ho. He's like, oh my gosh, I'm going to save like, you know, $10,000 over 10 years, my bill's locked in. I'm, I hate the power company. And then he calls me back like a couple weeks later and he's like, yeah, I thought about it. I talked with Cindy and uh, I just think it's just too much now. We're just, just going to stay with the power company. I mean, they're not bad. And I was like, well, okay, not a big deal. And I was too busy to like, you know, you know, say like, well, I guess you can keep paying the rate hikes if you want to. Like that doesn't really impact me. It only impacts who? Oh, you. But I didn't say that because I was busy. And you know what happened? Guess who called me back a couple months ago? And they're like, Bill called you. Yeah, Bill called me. And he's like, Jeremy, I can't believe it. And he's like, my bill, like I didn't realize, but it, it actually more than doubled the last three years. Like I wrote it all out. I didn't even realize that it was so expensive. And they just raised it again. I was like, can I, can I get the solar? Can I get that same deal? I'm like, well, uh, I don't, I don't know. Like I'm kind of busy, like, but man, I can come over a couple of days. So he drags me over there. He's like forcing me to come over there. I come over there, you know, get them all back up, submit it. And guess what happened? Yeah. He didn't get, he didn't get approved. 
He didn't get approved. Utility denied his application. Utility denied his application. Yeah, because he's in that cul-de-sac and his other three neighbors got solar. And he too much back feed for that one transformer. Yeah. And he was just he was just crying. I mean, so you're not gonna be one of those people that come cry to me that you know you have to keep paying the rate hikes, are you? Oh no, I'm never gonna be like that. See, that's really hard for them to like come back from that. Okay, that's an example of a tie down. Now that's not going to work as well if you don't know how to build a big enough gap. Because if it's a tiny gap and you push and pressure them, that'll work some. But if you do both, it's almost impossible for them to cancel. Like it's really, really like almost impossible. Your cancel rate goes down to like a couple percent. Does that help? There's a... The first question I asked you when I was literally in a cell was, I was in a cell and the guy was like signing up and then he backed out and then I quickly voxed you. And you said, say this. It's like, and I literally just said it to him. I'm like, how are you going to save money every month unless you go solar? And the guy thought it for like three seconds. And he's like, yeah, that's right. And then just put his head down and, and start resigning yeah. the dogs. So, the, yeah, we train you all that in our virtual boat. Now, I digress. I got to go. Now, um, here's what we'll do for you. Because I know, um, Anthony, you're asking, like, how do I introduce them to what you guys do? So uh, anybody, if you want a few more dibbles, because we'll give you a few more dibbles if you, if you want to look at what we do. Um, we'll have you go to our free Facebook group. We'll give you access to one of our groups. Um, where should I, should I send this to you? Or what do you want me to do? And, uh, yeah, if you want to send it to our email, you mean to type it in there or yeah, type it in the chat. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. You guys better get on this cause it's going to disappear sales. We'll have you, we'll have you go to this group. Cause we have a ton of, uh, solar salespeople in this group, salesrevolution.pro. It's like 82,000 salespeople in there. Uh, you know, there's probably, yeah, there's probably at least three or 4,000 that are solar in there. I would say maybe, maybe more. So go there. And then what I'll have you do is send me uh, message me directly. Once you join the Facebook group. Now I won't be the one responding to you, even though I love you, but we, we have like 19 people in there in our DMS and say, I heard Jeremy talk on this, you know, interview. And he said, I could have the NEPQ black book of questions. Okay, and I'll just give that to you for free. I mean, we only charge like a hundred bucks for that anyways. I'll just give it to you for free, but you got to say like, hey, I just talked, I saw Jeremy on this Facebook Live. He said you would give me the NEPQ Black Book of Questions for free. Now, there's some of them in there will apply to what you sell, but they're more generic. You have to make it more industry specific because we train 158 different industries, including yours, okay? Now, that will have you start there, okay? Now, you want to start learning like, advanced stuff then i just gave you a few hints here like industry specific stuff then just message somebody in there and say hey i want to book with one of your i want to talk with one of your account managers and when you get on with the account manager just tell them what industry you're in okay because we have like 27 different sales training programs and once they find out your industry and kind of what your sales ability is now and we always base that off what you're making because what you're making tells us what your sales ability really is, right? That the, the, the paychecks, you know, like John Madden, like the football teams, like you are who your record says you are. That's how you keep scoring sales, right? You're not like an amazing salesperson if you don't make a ton of money, right? Let's be real. So once we find out kind of what you're making compared to where you're wanting to be, and once we find out maybe things that you're saying or not asking or how you're using your tone, then they'll recommend which training program to put you in you probably want more of specific solar training which we do as well we even have a portal for that now plus we have people like roberry that actually teach you how to tie in any pq to solar specific okay any questions out there any questions but you guys can also go to barnes and noble and buy the new book if you guys know we have a, a wall street journal bestseller and a barnes and noble bestseller we just released this like three months ago this even has some solar examples in it and you're not going to get rich from this because you're only going to retain maybe 5% of what you read. Uh, but if you go to Barnes & Noble's website, don't buy it from Amazon because I we have a deal with Barnes & Noble. So if I find out you bought it from Amazon, I'd be really pissed. Okay. So only go to Barnes & Noble. It's $17 there. Amazon, it's 16 So if you need a loan to pay the extra dollar or a GoFundMe page, just let us know. And we can loan the money to you with interest, the extra dollar. Okay. So barnesandnoble.com, type in new model, Jeremy Miner, new model selling Jeremy Miner, and buy it from Barnes and Noble or just walk down to your 
local books or you it's in most Barnes and Noble locations. If it's not, then just buy it on their website. Okay. All right. Real, real quick, you want, where can they find you on Instagram, Twitter? Facebook? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll just type in my IG handle. Okay. And Roberry, if you wanted to post yours as well, appreciate your time as well, brother. Yeah, no, I mean, you can find me through through Minor. I do a call for them every Monday morning, like at 7 a.m. I wanted to share like a, another constant question for my solar peeps out there. Yeah. If you, uh, coming from the man himself, Minor, if you stay with the bill that you have now, is that going to save you money every single month? And will that actually eliminate your bill eventually? Or will you have to keep paying that bill forever? And so the biggest issue that we have is getting people to see the real situation, right? And so like the way that you frame it and then your tonality is, is, is huge, is huge. So if you, if you let them, like if you, so if you stay with Nevada power and, and they keep, you know, making you pay the rate hikes, how will you, how will you ever, how will they ever lower your bill? So confused tone. It's a how to question. You let them solve that problem in their own mind. See, they internalize that. They're like, oh, they won't. See, that's internal persuasion, right? Does that make sense? Okay, so if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's just my handle's Jeremy Lee Miner, M-I-N-E-R. Make sure you follow the verified account. There's about 490,000 followers on that, I think. Don't follow like the spam ones that sell you some crypto from that's awesome or something. I don't know. So make sure you follow the one that's verified. If it's not verified, that's not me. Okay. All right. I got to jump off. So you can go to salesrevolution.pro. You can buy the book. Like once you join salesrevolution.pro, just message me. Some of my team will message you back. If you want advanced training, like industry specific solar, like our clients, then just message them. Say, hey, I want to talk with somebody about advanced training. And you book it with one of our account managers. Easy? Beautiful. Thanks I got to so get brother. out of here. See, you guys made me go over 12 minutes over. You guys are forcing me to stay on here. All right. Appreciate you, you, Jeremy. Thank Thanks, you everybody. Thanks, brother. Joseph. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Of course. All righty, guys. Well, that concludes our meeting. Thank you so much, Roberry. Thank you so much, Miner. Thank you, everyone that uh, joined us. This will be posted on the YouTube. Both if you want to post our YouTube link. And a uh, copy will be on the YouTube within a week or so, along some of our other team training. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining. I will be taken off. Thank you, guys.